July 30th, 1932, the place Los Angeles. The opening day ceremonies of the 10th Olympiad of the modern era. It is the first Olympic Games to be held in the United States since the St. Louis Olympiad in 1904. Vice President Charles Curtis, in the absence of President Herbert Hoover, opens the Games. In the name of the President of the United States, I proclaim open the Olympic Games of Los Angeles, celebrating the 10th Olympiad of the modern era. Navy Lieutenant George Kalman, captain of the United States fencing team, recites the Olympic oath for the more than 2,000 athletes from 30 countries. Respecting the regulations which govern them, and with a desire to participate in the true spirit of sportsmanship, for the honor of our country, and for the glory of sport. Less than nine months later, Lieutenant Kalnan would be killed while serving aboard the dirigible USS Akron, lost at sea during an electrical storm. One of the athletes taking the oath is Ralph Metcalf of the United States. He is the favorite to win both the 100 and 200 meter dashes. Before the games would be over, he would be involved in two of the greatest controversies in Olympic history. It is 3.30 p.m. August 1st, 1932 the final of the 100-meter dash. Both Ralph Metcalf and his teammate Eddie Tolan have gone through their preliminary and semifinal heats without a defeat. A few months earlier, Metcalf beat Tolan in both sprints at the Olympic trials. But now the situation is different. This time they face each other for the Olympic gold medal. Tolan is in the lane closest to the camera. Metcalf is in lane three in the middle of the track. Metcalf and Tolan break the tape together. The decision is held up while the judges check the photo finish. Finally, Eddie Tolan at the top of the photo is declared the winner. Ralph Metcalf in the middle is placed second. Ralph Metcalf always had doubts about the controversial finish. I've never been convinced that I was defeated. I think that it should have been a tie race because the um, timers gave me the same time as they get awarded to Eddie Tolan. I congratulated him and he congratulated me. And if you recall, it was flashed over the world that I had won because there's no question about me breaking the tape. This official photograph of Tolan at the top and Metcalf at the bottom was taken a tenth of a second after the tape was broken by both men. The judges determined that Tolan's entire body had crossed the finish line before Metcalf's, even though they broke the tape at the same time. Of course, it took longer than they normally do to come up with the official decision. When he finished, he arched his back, and you could see the uh, post that held the tape on it at the small of his back. I had been told later on that the officials uh, thought that I would be a certainty of winning the 200 meters because they thought I was strong in the 200 meters, and they gave it to Eddie told him because they said it was his last Olympics and that I would win the 200 meters. A few days later, the final of the 200 meter run was held. Again, Eddie Tolan is the winner with Ralph Metcalf finishing third. After the race, it was revealed that Metcalf's lane was measured incorrectly. He had to run almost three yards further than the other five men in the race. It was no question that I spotted the field at least uh, eight or nine feet. I did not know that. If I'd known I was running the handicap race, I would have run it entirely differently. It is Berlin, Germany, four years later, the final of the 100-meter dash. Again, Ralph Metcalf goes through his heats in semifinal without a defeat. Jesse Owens of the United States has also won three preliminary races. Owens is in lane one at the top. Metcalf is in lane six at the bottom. Jesse Owens first, Ralph Metcalf second. For the third time in three races, Ralph Metcalf has barely missed winning a gold medal. It is six days later, 
the final of the 400 meter relay. The day before the race, the United States team is named. The selection creates an angry response in American newspapers. Two of the original team members are replaced. They are both Jewish. Stories circulated throughout Berlin that the Nazis asked that the Jewish runners not be permitted to compete and that United States officials acceded to the request. I resented the fact that they left two Jewish boys off of the team, Frank Stroll Stoller and Marty Glickman, in order to satisfy the Nazi people over there. It was our team. We were not supposed to have Germany dictate to us, nor their philosophy, nor their politics to us, because we selected our own team, and we should have fielded our best athletes. Jesse Owens leads off for the United States. He will hand off to Ralph Metcalf. The feeling that I had and the displeasure that I had over the way they had the relay team caused me to burn up a lot of energy and therefore I ran the fastest race. I was really angry when I ran that race. Metcalf hands off to Foy Draper. Frank Wyckoff takes the final pass off. United States wins by 10 yards. Ralph Metcalf has finally won a gold medal as a member of the United States 400 meter relay team. Well, I think it's God's will that I never won an individual gold medal. I make no apologies for that. Everything doesn't depend upon the Olympics. It's, it's good, it's great experience, it's good training. It prepares you for life and I think it prepared me well. I wondered what would have happened if I had won all four gold, gold medals. I don't think it would have changed, but it may have. I don't think so. But I think losing made me a bigger person and helped me to face the realities of life. It is August 5th, 1932, Los Angeles, the 5,000 meter run. Ralph Metcalf's two controversial races are still the major topic of conversation.